There was once a time when if I had been told that a favorite book or medium of mine was being turned into a movie, I would have been all for it. I can still remember getting psyched out of my mind for the news that The Inheritance Cycle was getting a movie. And then I watched Aragon, and I have never really forgiven fantasy filmmaking since then. Thank God for Lord of the Rings, or else I would have lost all hope in the idea of fantasy television or movies being good. I'm still slowly losing hope with fantasy television anyway these days, but that's for an entirely different reason. Burn in hellfire, rings of power. And speaking of burning things, entertainment execs have become entirely too comfortable with burning cash lately when it comes to remakes, reimaginings, and reboots. In the last few years, we've gotten Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Indiana Jones, The Witcher, and God only knows what else they have pulled from in history. But no matter what TV show or movie that I have watched, they have all included male characters, and almost every single one of them has been, well, a loser. Whether those are made-up characters that writers threw in for a laugh, or to reflect well off of the female character that they really wanted to highlight, or else they were legacy characters who have been ground to dust beneath the wheels of progressivism, I don't really know. But they exist. They are annoying, depressing, and downright rage-inducing to watch. And so my question after going through this painful modern media watch is why? Why have characters like Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Indiana Jones, Thor, Loki, Batman, Julius Caesar, Mark Antony, and every other Prince Charming, and the list goes on, be downgraded, dismissed, or else disappeared entirely in favor of a certain type of feminism that is so hard to swallow, it might as well be a whole lemon? Well, I've scratched my head done some research, sat around and thought about it, and I've come up with a few reasons as to why this is, and none of it really bodes well for the future of entertainment unless something drastic happens. We've already seen the strikes that have ground a lot of movies to a halt, and the interviews that will plague the careers of actors and actresses for a very long time. We've seen the movies that have been losing money left, right, and center, and we've seen what good acting and respect will do for goodwill of the fans. And the more that I watch, the more I realize that male characters have been made losers for several sad and sinister reasons. And the first is fear. I genuinely believe that many Hollywood execs and writers and actors are afraid of the concept of male heroes. They fear the influence that these characters can have upon pop culture. The first Top Gun movie came out 30 plus years ago, and people are still talking about the awesomeness of his character. Aragorn is a character that is constantly looked to because of his heroism, his nobility, his compassion and courage that he demonstrates in all three of the Lord of the Rings films. When male characters are genuine heroes, they are looked to as symbols of hope and have qualities that many people strive to possess. They set themselves above the average person because of virtues that they have, and as a result, they are remembered for decades. And I believe that the concept of heroism, the thing that separates the average person from those who are great, is a terrifying thing to some people. Whether it is because they are cowards and cannot stand to see someone better than them, or because they are genuinely evil and wish for nothing good to exist, it doesn't really matter. The concept of courage especially in many heroes, as there have been so many over the last decades, is like a rallying cry towards the general public. Male heroes like the ones mentioned, those who are men of action, men of skill, men of true nobility and compassion, present figures that people will aspire towards. It will moralize people to be better than they think they can be, and offer a sense of empowerment that I am certain terrifies those media elites. Because those figures are outside of their control, and not beholden to their established ideologies. And so they must destroy them, tear them down, or else cause them to disappear so that they cannot challenge a narrative that they are desperate to create. The fear of morality, the fear of virtue and courage, and them trying to eliminate almost all aspects of those things from male heroes should be a notion that unsettles us all. The second reason that most modern male role models are losers, or have been made losers, is due in large part to jealousy. To create a character of heroism, one that stands the test of time and is constantly looked to as a symbol of hope and morality, is a feat that few writers have the skill to create. George Lucas has created many of them with his creation of Star Wars, and the many heroes that have graced those movies. He has done similarly with Indiana Jones as well, and those characters are pop culture icons for so many and continue to be despite the bastardization of their characters currently. And the reason they have been turned into losers is simply envy for their lack of ability to create something half as good. 
This is no more apparent than the plethora of female characters that have been created to appear alongside them. So the audience can do an analysis comparison. There is Reva alongside Obi-Wan, Fennec Shand alongside Boba Fett, Bo-Katan alongside the Mandalorian, Helena Shaw alongside Indiana Jones, Rey alongside Luke Skywalker, Sylvie alongside Loki, Jane Foster alongside Thor, because I refuse to use her other name, Cassie alongside Scott, Ironheart in place of Tony Stark, Kate Bishop alongside Hawkeye, Kate Kane in place of Batman, and so on and so forth. Some of these characters are canon, some have been created, but all of them have manifested to show up the males they are playing alongside of. To show how much better they are than the guys that the show or movie that they are in are supposed to be about. All of it is like the blaring of a trumpet that says, Notice me. Look at how much better I am. Look how much of a failure he is. And how I can do so much better in comparison. It's all just really sickening. And I wonder how much more of it we're going to see before someone steps in and realizes just how much money is being lost from failed marketing techniques like this. Because those female characters only really serve as an outlet for the jealousy of writers or execs who hate them, and by extension the audience, for slights that they cannot respond to or else are completely unaware of. They have to tear down the male heroes because they cannot be them. They have to show that they are comparable and weak because anything they create must be better. And the whole thing is tantamount to saying, I hate you, and I hate what you love, and I am going to make you hate it too, no matter what I have to do. No one with an attitude like that should be anywhere near a hairdressing salon, much less a Hollywood writer's or director's room. And finally, modern male characters are losers, or have been made losers, because morality and concepts such as right and wrong have become evil things. This is maybe the most sinister reason for the destruction of our male heroes. They were memorable and iconic, not just because of their bravery, not just because of their fighting skills, their courage, their heroism, or their compassion, but because they had a keen sense of right and wrong that was displayed clearly and organically. Their values were things that were never compromised on, despite the pressure that they faced or the fear of certain death, and many times they were willing to die in deference to those values. And now, morality in these characters is hated because of the abrupt about-face many of them have done. Luke was someone who would never give up on family, even in the face of certain death. He never stopped trying to save those he loved. In his new iteration, he gives up on his family as a lost cause completely, before hiding himself away on a deserted island to wallow in his own failure. Obi-Wan Kenobi never failed to give his fellow person a helping hand when they needed it, and would go out of his way to show others kindness and compassion. And in his show, he has become someone who turns his back on the suffering of others, only prompted to engage when someone pushes him to do anything. Thor, who went through a major character arc over the course of ten years, learning responsibility, decides to shirk all of it after the events of Endgame and becomes someone who no one can take seriously. Indiana Jones, a die-hard adventurer and someone who never gave up on friends, on family, on the mission objective, has resigned himself to the fate of a bitter old man that no one cares about at all. Each and every one of them has turned their back on the morals they held so staunchly to because morality, when in the hands of these characters, has become an evil thing. And that should be the most disturbing part about all of this, that male characters cannot and should not be looked to no matter who they were or what they did. Morality does not exist in the hands of these men in their modern iterations, and even when it is handed over to the female characters, that morality takes a back seat in favor of power. So in the end, the female characters cannot be looked to because their values are secondary to their ambitions, and the male characters cannot be looked to because the writers and execs have made it so that they do not even understand what morality is anymore. And that is truly sad, because if the destruction of morality in all of our heroes continues, then we and future generations may not ever understand what role models are and what true heroism is. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Be sure to leave a comment down below about your thoughts on this topic and how you would like to see it fixed. Until next time, everyone.